this evening. Ashish Ketan, uh, leader of the Ahmadbi Party, uh, also with us, the former Chief Secretary of the Delhi Government, Shailaja Chandra, and the President of the Indian Medical Association, Ravi Vankhedkar. Uh, Ashish, appreciate you joining us here uh, on the program. Uh, you know, I understand that you've given 30 days to invite stakeholder comments uh, on this draft advisory that you've put forward. But Ashish, has there been any consultation before you put this advisory out with the Indian Medical Association, with hospitals operating in Delhi. Uh, I, you know, I would imagine that there has been some conversation that's taken place before you arrived at this draft. Can you explain to us the process that's been followed? Yes, of course, uh, this uh, uh, advisory itself is a product of uh, several months long consultation with different stakeholders. I think. Uh, if you open the advisory, you will find right at the start, the advisory says that a committee comprising of nine members was constituted by the Honorable Minister of Health for formulating a policy regarding allegations of excessive charging, etc., etc. And this nine-member committee had representation mm. of Indian Medical Association, Delhi Medical Council, Delhi Medical Association, and other stakeholders. So this is not uh, an arbitrary exercise, this is a, a consultative participatory exercise mm. in which different stakeholders have already participated and further now comments have been sought. Uh, I, I think what the issues here are at stake are very vital issues which are that uh, uh, time and again mm. we hear complaints of excessive charging, uh, malpractices, lot of variation in which uh, the packages yeah. are sold to patients. Uh, and so on and it is uh, yeah. I think that uh, need of the R is to uh, standardize, bring transparency and hold uh, all nursing homes and private ho hospitals accountable to high standards. Hmm. Uh, you, you know, I, I couldn't agree with you more that there is a need for more transparency, certainly, and the uh, idea and the hope was that most states would actually adopt the Clinical Establishments Act, which attempts to do exactly that. Now, post the stakeholder comments, which you expect over the next 30 days, what's the process from here on? Uh, will you need to bring in a new law? Uh, will the current uh, uh, law need amendment? Will there be a new act that needs to be put forward? How is this going to work? Will you need the LG's permission uh, for any of this to go through? Uh, again, the advisory itself uh, has mentioned uh, that uh, perhaps some rules uh, framed under the Delhi Clinical Establishment Act uh, may need to be amended or certain new real rules need to be added. But I will tell you from the ex past experience of the Delhi uh, government uh, with regard to its interaction and interface with private hospitals in Delhi is that uh, invariably uh, all the advisories issued by Delhi government have been uh, more or less complied by private establishments because of uh, the reasonable nature mm. and the democratic fashion in which these advisories had been issued in the past. So I don't see uh, any reason why this particular advisory after due consultation, whatever shape it takes, will um, uh, face any pushback. And the idea is not to, you know, uh, wield uh, uh, a stick. The idea is to uh, evolve a standard to which everybody willfully complies. Okay, uh, I think that would be music to the ears of the uh, healthcare services community. But let me get in the former Chief Secretary of uh, the Delhi Government, Shailaja Chandra, in as well. Uh, Ms. Chandra, you know, we've often uh, on scene BCTV18 in uh, conversations with you spoken about the need for greater transparency as well as standardization. Uh, the advisory that the Delhi Government has put out, uh, you know, A, do you believe that this adequately addresses some of those concerns? And B, uh, do you believe that as uh, Ashish Khetan is pointing out, uh, this, this is not uh, the government acting with a heavy hand. This is the government trying to get uh, healthcare service providers to bring in a higher degree of transparency and standardization for the benefit of patients. Uh, Shireen, what I have heard, because I have not had much access to the exact uh, notification, but all I can say is that it is well intentioned to be able to contain the kind of profiteering and commercialization. However, it in the, it, the health is an industry right now. If it is an industry, it has to yeah. be regulated under a statute. The Delhi Nursing Homes Act 1963 mm. is an outdated, toothless piece of legislation. The Clinical Establishment Act has mm. not been adopted in Delhi. If they adopt the Clinical Establishment Act, even then, on the question of pricing and on the question...
question of containment of price, you need the act to give you that power. Neither does the Nursing Homes Act have mm. it. And the Clinical Establishment Act, even if it comes in Delhi, does not have that power. If that power is not with the Act, the okay. rulemaking authority cannot assume any power. So I would say a very well-intentioned idea of containing profiteering and commercialization. But ultimately, goodwill alone will not work. This is a commercial business. And if people yes. find that there is no regulation which has teeth, and there are no people who are going to be you know, taken to task for not doing what they're asked to do, then it is just mm. like, um, you know, good wishes mm. and please do this, which some people, yes, Mr. Khatan is right. At times when government issues guidelines and advisories, they are taken seriously, but only up to a point. When it comes to hard brass tracks of commercialization, ultimately yeah. the market takes over and there is cutthroat competition. I would also you know, like I'll, to add, yeah. Let, 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 Yes. Yeah. No, I just wanted to make a point that, uh, you know, the, the minister, the health minister did say that if hospitals don't adhere to the final law passed after public comments, then their licenses will be cancelled. But you're saying that uh, the, the act have no itself uh, to... uh, does not give them... Absolutely okay. not, because the 1953 Act only had in mind tiny nursing homes and maternity homes, and the fine, if you look at it, is 100 rupees. All that has to be changed. You will need a new act. I'm not saying it's not needed. I have been saying you will for need a, a new long act. time yeah. that you need a regulation. It has to be on the lines of the Central Electricity and Delhi Electricity Regulatory Commission, a tribunal, something like that. Unless okay. it has teeth and it has legal uh, weaponry, there's no way that commercial organizations, they are an industry after all, and they will behave like an industry. Sure. Ashish, uh, very quickly, I'd like you to respond to Ms. Chandra that while you might be well-intentioned, if you don't have the powers under the Act, uh, it'll pretty much be toothless. Uh, well, uh, my response to that uh, would be uh, that uh, I partially agree with her and I partially disagree. Uh, to say that health is... Uh, uh, only an industry and there is only commercialization and profiteering I think would be a slightly over the top statement because uh, there are medical professionals and there are clinical establishments which uh, have at their core public service and patient care uh, in, the, in, in the way they function mm. uh, so I won't say that everybody out there is uh, you know out to make maximum money and profitize. Uh, no, and I, I, don't stuff, uh, that. I don't think she's that. suggesting that. I don't think she's suggesting that. No. No. Uh, so, one. Two uh, are, I mean, in general, uh, what is our experience? Our experience shows that in government, the first response is to make new laws, bring new rules, and excessively legislate mm. and excessively uh, regulate. I think that's not the approach of this government because while we realize that okay. private uh, health care needs to be regulated, we also realize that private health care is very, very critical for providing public health care because there is a gap between government capacity and, 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 and I, do, I don't think anybody is arguing uh, the demand which is I, I don't think anybody is arguing about the yeah. demand supply so, mismatch of the so, need for the private no, uh, health care no, sector. The, the but actually, point a specific point. So you are essentially point, saying. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. The short point that I want no, so to No, so you're essentially saying that, that the Delhi Nursing Home rules of 2011 much. will be amended. See, if necessary, new rules can be brought in, old rules can be amended. But I think we are, uh, you know, uh, focusing too much on legislative, legislative part or the rulemaking part of it. What this exercise has done for the first time that so far there was no advisory mm. in uh, public domain that private hospitals, whether uh, there are commercial hospitals or small nursing homes, they will only prescribe drugs which are available in the national list of essential medicines and if they are going out of it, then yeah. there will be cap of 50% on the cost of procurement or MRP, whichever is lower. There was no advisory so far which talk about mm. how packaging will be done, how pricing will be done, how counseling will be done. 
uh, on how investigations no, and procedures will be followed. But the question is, will this be uh, binding or not? The question then is, will this be binding or not? That is the See, point. That is the concern that Shailaja Chandra is raising. She's she's in agreement with you that this is binding. the need of the hour. But she's questioning the fact that this will be binding because the law doesn't provide for that kind of power to be exercised. See, uh, that's what I am saying. I think we are missing the wood for the trees. Law, rules, regulations. We, if the stage comes to it, we will cross that bridge also, which is what new rule, laws need to be brought okay. in, what new rules uh, need to be framed. By the okay. way, I'll just tell you, the Clinical Establishment Act is, ha, has already been adopted by several other states in the country. Has have things really. changed over there? There are several states which have already adopted Clinical Establishment Act. Have things completely changed? A paradigm shift has happened? Has it brought complete transparency okay. and accountability okay. over there? I think right. we need to focus so, more so on the end product and not like what process and group we will take. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so you're basically trying to say that you want to get the private healthcare industry on board uh, with you and you believe that uh, uh, it, it's not going to be a heavy-handed approach that the government will take. B.S. Ajay Kumar, I want to talk about some of the specifics and ask you what this is actually going to mean operationally as far as healthcare service providers are concerned. Some of the highlights of the advisory, uh, the national le list of essential medicines, uh, you will have to prescribe drugs from the NLEM, a maximum of 50% of the markup on medicines, uh, that is what uh, the advisory says will be allowed. Private hospitals can give high-risk packages. You will have to put a cap on the packages that are provided to patients. I mean, as I pointed out, these are just some of the highlights of what the government has, uh, has put out this evening. Uh, what do you make of it? And operationally, what is it going to mean for you? See, these are all what they're trying to do. In my view, they are not focusing on the type of quality and outcomes. As a doctor, Apart from running hospitals, I can tell you the focus should be on the outcomes and not cheap medicine. And the reason we are discussing all this today, the, the price, somebody saying profiteering. First of all, where is the profiteering when the return on investment is only 6%? I think they're all totally misguided statements. Mm. All I want to say is, as long as it is majority of paying patients are cash out of pocket, this debate will go on. And as you put price controls, it will severely interfere with the quality of treatment. We will go for cheap quality treatment. Mm -hmm. India has advanced greatly. A value-based player outcome is great. We are actually lowest in the world in terms of technology and service we provide. But if you interfere yeah. with this, we will go back in decades where we provide cheap care. You know, and everybody will adjust to that. Mm -hmm. You know, we don't really, private equity will not come into health care. You know, why will they come? They want the returns. India has advanced so much because of investments. Global investors see it. And the investments are what driving. Government is not driving. So, no, like HCG group, we don't have one mm. rupee grant from government. Not a single piece of land, an inch of land from mm. the government. So, why should government interfere? They should monitor. The, are we providing quality care? Are yeah. we doing this? I think they're interfering okay. in saying price control is very harmful to the system, whatever way we try to do. They should encourage what Swiss model, which we have recommended, mandatory insurance for everyone. Make it cashless. So everybody is insured, mm. private, public, a person who is in the sales business, everybody is takes a mandatory right. insurance. Right. And that will cover, okay. that will increase okay. the number. That will automatically cover and we will deal with the insurance companies. Government is out of the system. Government should not interfere. We work with insurance companies, yeah. make sure we deal for the type of service we provide, because then we are dealing with people who have knowledge, global knowledge, of what it costs to provide a treatment. But okay. somebody is sitting in a government, let, let, will not sure. have the government knowledge, global knowledge of what it costs. They themselves go abroad, you know, politicians okay. go abroad, they, get treatment, get their bills, and see what's yes, the bill for the same care. Then you will know what is the actual bill they're incurring. Yeah. Let, let. Let me get a quick comment in from Ashish Ketan. Ashish, monitor by all means. Don't intervene and don't interfere because you are going to, in fact, set the private healthcare industry, which you yourself acknowledged is providing a service and a much needed uh, service to bridge the healthcare deficit in the country. You're doing that a disservice by bringing in price controls and price caps. Let the insurance take care of it. You know? I think Provide insurance uh... to everyone. 
Yeah, I let, think let, let, let me get him to respond, Mr. Ajay Kumar. I think uh, there are several, several, several issues have been raised here, and I think uh, if you examine each of them very carefully, you will find that uh, they are without any basis or logic. Uh, number one, we are not interfering or intervening at all, and when we say that all uh, pricing should be reasonable, when we say that drugs prescribed outside the national list of essential medicines should be capped at 50% uh, profit of the procurement mm. cost, I think that's a very reasonable return. It's not 6%, no, I want to reply to that. And I that want to that applies to implants. Mm. Can I, Mr. Kumar, can I... No, that particular issue, yeah. can I talk? I'll, I'll just get you to respond. I'll get you to respond. respond. One, one second, sir. One second, player. sir. Let him, let him finish and then, Mr. Ajay Kumar, Mr. Ajay yeah. Kumar, let, let him finish and then I'll get you to respond. Ashish, go yeah. ahead. I, I think, Mr. Kumar, you should not get worked up. You should just listen no, very not, carefully. Not, not, I didn't intervene when you were speaking. Repeatedly told question. Yeah. I want to give a fair uh, answer. One. Uh, so, implants. Yes, go ahead, Ashish. Uh, medicines, all this should be, all should be priced at 50%. The cap is 50%, and I think which is a very reasonable cap. 50% is a sufficient margin. Uh, right now, mm. it was completely left open. So there have been reports, and these are reports by institutions, uh, national, I think, pharmaceutical pricing association. They have come out with a report which says that in some cases they found that the profit was at 1,700%. Yeah. These are all tabulated, recorded, empirical reports. So one. Number two right. is that when packages yes. are offered to patients, sometimes the patients don't know that what is what are the hidden costs built in, in, in those packages. We just mm. want that all those packages should be discussed threadbare with the, with the patient and there should not be any hidden cost. Okay. And two, if there are any uh, uh, risk okay. uh, premium, which is also part of the package, if there are additional complications, then pricing should be according to certain set standards, which should be globally okay. acceptable okay. and globally enforceable and globally practiced right now and right and the the second right. point which is that this will discourage uh, private investment or global uh, investment or foreign investment i think that's not right if uh, foreign investment or private investment is coming into medical health care for making reasonable profit then i think nobody should be discouraged and mm. that's certainly not the intention of the government to discourage okay. any private investment all we want is transparency well, well the question and is some set standards Transp and right. everybody adheres to those standards okay uh, miss ajay kumar quick final say we're yeah, completely yeah. out of time yeah, very I quickly sir we, I, you are looking in isolation for the drugs for example somebody has a big center in the heart of the city when we have multiple center we do global purchase so we may be purchasing at a lower price compared to somebody who is running a small hospital. Why should we be compared? Our operating costs are high. See, what we are not looking at is what is our operating mm. cost? What is the rental cost? What does this cost to do? See, you are looking in isolation of a pharma, but look at the entire cost. How many people have employed? How many uh, yeah, talented yeah. doctors we have? What is the price we pay for the doctors? Some of the doctors are running 200 you know, something in crores to bring in talent from abroad to provide that quality. What does it take? That is why our return on investment is only 6%. Please read the EY report showing very clearly hospitals return on independent is very low. Why is it so low then if they're making so much yes. profit and taking both loads of money? Where is this both loads of money going? You know, look here, we are all accountable. We are all audited. Can I say so You please see what is the margin. <laughs> Nobody yeah. has a margin more than 5%, 8%, yes. 9% in the industry. This is the question of survival. No private institution, I will give you one advice, no private institution will survive with these kind of measures of price cap. Please go for insurance. Make sure everybody is okay. insured. What does it matter how I negotiate well, with well, the Well, Mr. Ajay Kumar, you... you 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 you've certainly you've certainly started the public commentary process today by providing your comments here to Ashish Khetan live on on television and i can imagine that uh, that this process will continue but uh, gentlemen we're unfortunately completely out of time we'll bring you back again uh, to take this conversation forward but for this evening appreciate you joining us here on CNBC TV 18 Ashish Khetan Chalija Chandra and BS Ajay Kumar thanks very much